All right, just going to do a video refuting the Calvinistic false doctrine of infant baptism. Because Calvinists, like most Protestants, like the Anglicans, Luth Anglicans, sorry, Lutherans, uh, all these other guys, uh, they baptize babies. Now, it's not to say these people are lost for doing so, because unlike the Roman Catholics, they don't baptize them for salvation. That's the big difference there. But still, the practice of baptizing infants, regardless of if you think it's for salvation or not, is not scriptural. Because baptism is a conscious choice that you have to make when you're a grown adult. Okay, if you, you can't you can't have somebody choose for you to get baptized. You gotta choose yourself, make that decision yourself to get baptized. And I show from scripture that Calvinists will twist certain passages to teach that, that you can baptize infants, but we're gonna see how they're actually not only are they twisting them, but they're misapplying these texts and the context of them, and also how examples of baptism in scripture always include believing believing, faith preceding the baptism. Now infants are not capable of believing the gospel, they're not capable of understanding their sinners. And getting saved so therefore their baptism is not scriptural okay just don't all, all you're doing is just dunking them in the water you're, all you're doing is giving them a bath pretty much but you're not baptizing them okay first of all i want to point out like i said earlier faith in jesus christ precedes baptism acts chapter 18 verse 8 and cyphus or sorry and cryphus i'm probably not saying that word right but cyphus the chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the lord with all his house and many of the corinthians hearing believed and were baptized Okay, notice like the, the comma there, believed, comma, and were baptized. It's a or it's a order of it's a procession of events. They believed and then they were baptized. Signified by the comma. But they had to believe first. Okay? Oh, it doesn't say you have to believe first. Well, we're going to compare scripture and scripture and show that's what happened. Acts chapter twelve ver sorry, Acts chapter eight, sorry, verse twelve to thirteen. Hadn't had the best sleep tonight, so a bit uh, rusty on this video, but bear with me. Acts chapter eight, verse twelve to thirteen. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. And then Simon himself believed also, and he was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondering, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now I need to point this out. Simon the sorcerer did not have a belief in the heart. Okay, All they wanted was to get into those little, the miracles they were doing. That simple. But we see here, notice the procession of events. Okay, They believed and then they were baptized. Okay. And even Simon himself believed and he was baptized. That simple. They believe first and then they're baptized. Again, infants cannot believe. Infants are not mentally capable of, of really believing anything of that extent. So their baptism, all you're doing is just giving them a bath. You're not actually scripturally baptizing them, uh, which is a conscious decision. Now Calvinists, what they try to do is they like to use examples of entire households being baptized, but they ignore the fact that the word of the Lord was preached before the baptism. Because it is what the Catholics do too. The Catholics will also try to use these passages about the entire household being baptized. And they say, see, that proves we can baptize infants. Okay. First of all, I need to point out that nowhere in these two passages I'm about to read, do we actually record have a recorded example of the infants of the house being baptized. But second of all, they ignore the fact that, again, the word of the Lord was preached before they were baptized. And they believed. I want to point that out as well. So the entire household had the word of the Lord preached to them first. Let's actually read the passages that they try to use to justify uh, infant baptism. Acts chapter 16, verse 14 to 15. Acts 16, verse 14 to 15. And a certain woman named Lydia, the, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, probably not saying that right, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of by, which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, and when she was baptized, sorry, in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Notice there, she attended other things that were spoken by Paul, and when she was baptized, it happened after that, okay, whose, Lord, whose heart the Lord opened. That's what we have there. She believed first, and then she was baptized. She heard, she attended under the things that were spoken by Paul. Well, what's being spoken by Paul? The gospel. He is going around preaching the gospel. And her household was baptized too. But notice that this happens after he, she uh, attended the things spoken of by Paul. Now, further confirmation of the word of the Lord being preached prior to the baptism. Acts chapter 16, verse 31 to 34. Really good passage that they try to twist, but actually proves the opposite. Acts chapter 16, verse 31 to 34. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them at the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his all his straight way. 
and when he had when he, and when he had brought them into his house, he sat meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Again, notice the procession of events. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Okay. And what happens? He took them to their house. They preached the word of the Lord to them, and then they were baptized. So yes, his ha his household was baptized, but it was after the the word of the Lord was preached to them, and they believed. So ironically, this is the passage they try to use to judge the Calvinists and the Catholics try to use, but ironically, it proves the opposite. It proves you have to believe first. And again, where, where in this passage do you, you read about infants being baptized? It's, it just says the whole household. It does not say anything about infants being baptized. So they're, 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 what they're doing is called exegesis. They're, they're forcing their own doctrine into the text instead of just letting it speak for itself. Okay. Now finally, here's a good just proof text that demolishes any idea of baptizing infants. The eunuch was not able to get baptized prior to faith in Jesus Christ. It says that verbatim. Acts chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. Let's go there. And this passage alone makes the whole infant baptism uh, a bunch of unscriptural uh, pagan nonsense. Acts chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is a water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he, and he baptized him. Notice there, keeping in mind the other passages about believing first and then they're baptized. The word of the Lord was preached to them and then they're baptized. Notice here, what doth hinder me to be baptized? The word of the Lord was preached to him first. He's saying, what's hindering me to be baptized? What, what's stopping me? So the word of the Lord was preached to him, but what was, what was missing? He wasn't believing the gospel. He wasn't believing on Jesus Christ. Then Philip tells him, here's what he, he tells him, here's basically what's stopping you. You got to believe on Jesus Christ. If thou believest with all thine heart. And guess what he does? And then he's baptized. And by the way, too, I need to point something, something out as well. They went down both into the water. Okay. They were into the water. They went down into the water. They were not being sprinkled like on, as a baby. So sprinkling on, on baptism is also not scriptural. Baptism is by immersion, not sprinkling water. So I want to point that out as well. So the bottom line is, is that Calvinism perverts baptism. And again, they don't do it for salvation, but the p fact that they're baptizing infants is unscriptural because the baptism of an infant is not if they don't believe they cannot be baptized that's simple according to this text right here so yeah calvinism perverts baptism and they twist scripture and rip it out of context just like the catholics do to justify the pagan practice of infant baptism so don't be deceived by calvinism may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with all the brethren goodbye Thank you.